Welcome to a new season of the Weekly Mac. Get ready for a show full of surprises. Today we celebrate a fresh start. Mateo Casañas and Eduard Chetruc tell us about their awarded restaurant Disfruta. We listen and hopefully dance to the music of the reggae band Coers. Don't miss our newly revamped Guess What Quiz. Today we'll play to guest professions with the singer Chloe Phillips as our guest contestant. This is the Weekly Mac, your show in English, hosted by Marcella Topor. Hello and welcome back. I hope you've all had a great summer. The Weekly Mag is back with fun, facts, music, tips, comedy and much more. We have new surprises and faces that you'll discover if you stay with us, which I hope you will. And actually we'll start with a brand new section called Words and Facts in which we'll have fun and even learn a couple of things. So let's say hello to collaborators Ana Priscila Magrinha, Humberto Gonzalez and Mario Serra. Welcome all. Hi, Hi. Hello. And from this show on, Ana Priscila is going to prove false to refute some stories that we've all taken for granted. So, Ana Priscila, what do you have up your sleeve today? I have a classic. Uh, let's Ooh. start with a classic. It's we good. all know uh, Walt Disney. Uh, sure. We all know <laughs> him. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah of course. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, most of us, or a lot of people, think that he's frozen. Yeah? Did you ever hear about that? That his body is frozen? Now, well, Humberto is going to prove me wrong uh, and he's going to say he never heard that no, before. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> but slap my head and steal my hose, uh, hogs. Sorry, but I have never ever heard of that. Oh my I don't gosh. Think they okay, tell us that let's in the, throw uh, this away. No problem, <laughs> because you will tell us all about it. Yeah, but, but right? I, so. I can give you support because Thank all, you, Marius. <laughs> all my childhood, I was thinking about him as a frozen man. Uh, th that was very usual here to so think I'm, about I'm, him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that. Let's well, see if okay. It's true. Um, okay. Anyway, we'll know the truth uh, in a minute. Mm? And Marius Serra, as always, he will bring us uh, his weekly uh, word puzzle, which we'll know at the end of this hmm. section, uh, right? But this season, he's also bringing us some curious facts about some words and phrases. Marius. Yeah, and I will start with a very short. English words. Can you just read my hand? Yes. Okay. K. Okay. okay. Mm, have you ever wondered <laughs> where it comes when from? and when they started to say okay? Uh, mm. I actually, uh, in school, we actually had uh, three variations of where it started from, but I'm so excited to hear this because <laughs> I don't feel after the frozen one that I actually uh, know too much about my country. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, we expect that Marius will give us the true explanation. Yeah, with some help. <laughs> okay, and our brand new collaborator and reporter, Umberto Gonzalez. So, everybody wants to know who is Umberto Gonzalez? Well, I'm just a little old southern boy from Virginia. Uh, who actually moved to Catalonia uh, about four years ago. And I am very, very in, in love with what I call Catalan magic. And I have uh, started uh, studying its history. And all of a sudden, I came across something in Girona. Have you heard of Girona? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I hope so. And, uh, I think I live there. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's you know a little bit about it. it. <laughs> that's why I said it in a joke that, that um, the uh, city hall in Girona actually passed a law that, uh, or tried to pass a law, that, uh, that they were actually uh, having problems with people being late. Uh, and they wanted to make sure that uh, they passed a punctuality law. Okay. Have you ever been on late, Marcella? If I've been late? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Do I have to say this in front of the camera? Of course. Well, you can always well, lie. All right. Well, um, if you mean, if you want to ask me if I'm usually on time, the answer is I'm, you know, I do my best. I'm yes. working on it. Um, I'm getting there. <laughs> that means that you're always late. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I was trying to, no, I'm not always late. That's, that's not true. But I'm not the most punctual person ever. But like I said, I'm working on it. What about you? I, well, I have some questions for you on that one. But me, uh, I'm answer. always on time. <laughs> Today, I arrived 45 minutes before. Mm -hmm. So before. I actually, um, I think that most Americans usually are not that on time. But I mean, that uh, early. But I am actually usually 15 minutes early, 10 to 15 minutes early. It's the American rule. You <laughs> arrive 10 or 15 minutes early. And uh, I was surprised at what I found when I, make the, I made this uh, reporting. 
in Girona. I was very surprised and I'm actually wanting to ask you more questions later on. <laughs> right, so in Girona you asked people about punctuality. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it was your first video. Did it go well? I thought it went very yeah. well. Can yes. we take a pic? Oh my god, of course. Let's okay. see it. Where is Let's it? Let's do that. Now I'm on the prowl. Excuse me. Oh, Frances. No English. Okay. No English. Frances. Well, Umberto, I hope you were more successful than that. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I actually, uh, you know, I, I hate to say it, but uh, there were a few people that didn't speak any English. But wait until you see the rest of it. We got some good ones coming I your can't way. wait. I can't <laughs> wait. And speaking of late people, speaking of the devil in this case, Ana Prisida. Are you saying I'm a You're the I'm first on my list. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, you're the first on my list and uh, I don't know, you left me really like curious to find out more about Walt Disney and the whole Frozen thing. Yeah, there's uh, this, uh, this story about him. Uh, he died when he was uh, 64 years old in 1966 and a lot of people uh, think, still think, that his body was, was frozen right after he died at the hospital. They took his body, they did some cryogenic on him so they froze his body um, because what they wanted to do is wait for technology to being able to resurrect yeah. him uh, that was the idea that was when the I idea. was a child he is waiting to come back yeah yeah he's, he's still there somewhere <laughs> yeah. in the headquarters of uh, some uh, some scientific place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I have to tell you my friends this is not true. Oh my God. No. Okay, this might be why I never heard of this. <laughs> <laughs> because you are too young. I just, of course, I'm, I'm 37 okay. on Facebook. But anyway, um, the cryonics technique, does it exist? It does exist, does it does it... exist. And there's, there's probably a reason why people thought that uh, he was frozen because it actually started when he died. And somebody from the Disney company called this, uh, this uh, company who started fr uh, freezing people, asking about the, the technique, which doctors were yes. there in, uh, involved in the project. And so um, some people uh, knew about this call and they thought, Oh my gosh, Walt Disney, he became, uh, he, he's frozen because he was interested in that. Mm -hmm. And no, that's not true. The first person who got frozen, and he's still frozen, <laughs> in the headquarters of a company. Who? Um, uh, Dali. It was, it was a guy <laughs> called James Bedford. He was 73 years old, and he got frozen right two weeks after uh, Disney's death. So it was all very uh. close on time. Uh, um, and uh, he's still frozen, and there's a special day for him, the 12th of January, Every every year 12. is the James Bedford's day. So <laughs> when when January comes, maybe on the 12th, you can think about this man. He was a psychologist, mm. and he decided to do this. But I'm afraid to tell his family. They probably know that he won't be able to get to resurrected because the the techniques back then weren't as good as now. And nowadays you can still try it, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure you so, can go so back to wait. life. Now you can be resurrected with the new no, techniques. No, 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 no. Okay. You can yet, be frozen. <laughs> You, 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 you can you can be frozen okay. in a better way than in the old times, in the old days. Uh, but okay. uh, there's still it's still like an experimental technique, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But meant to like fulfill physical and mental um, shape. Um, uh, we have to. Are see they talking? It. Are we talking just physical, but like? No, no. Your, in theory, what they want to do it's integral. The, 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 the idea of the, of the freezing of cryogenics is that imagine that you, you get sick and there's no cure for your sickness at the time, mm -hmm. so you get frozen and you should get frozen before you die because you're still alive. What's the point of getting frozen <laughs> while you're already yeah. dead? But uh, uh, the law doesn't, doesn't allow to freeze somebody who's alive, you know. <laughs> but right. the idea is that if get you that. get sick, somebody freezes you and afterwards imagine that in 15 in 50 years they find a cure for it so you get defrosted like mm -hmm. you put uh, the person on the microwave and uh, you get the, the cure. Would you do it? <laughs> um, uh, if I knew I was gonna come back okay yeah why okay uh, I would do why it. Not? Why not? I would do it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. When? Um, well not wait, right wait, now. Wait, wait. I, I have to. <laughs> Don't look, hurry. You know what? It all depends on what's happening around me. I okay. have to say that. Okay. Yes. Right. I, I love one thing about audiovisual language. You can get frozen, which oh, yeah. means. Yeah. 
<laughs> like you stop, they they are saying that freezing and yeah, 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 yeah. is is in the language. Okay, one question, uh, an important question. Oh, How yeah. much is it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. But I'm guessing it's pretty expensive hmm. because uh, there's a whole freezer for you, and I guess it's an expensive technique, and you have to be there for the rest of your life. So they need a lot of space. M maintenance. Yeah, it's very... you need a lot of maintenance. Uh, Marcella, are you are you thinking about trying <laughs> it? Or, uh... I'm asking too many questions. <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just, just right. carry on. No, no, no. Just she's, you know, she's... curiosity. I'm curious. That's all. She's asking for me. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so Umberto. Yes. Mm, I think it's time to watch your video. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's find out uh, who actually is late and who is uh, on time. <laughs> we are here today to ask people if they are early, on time, or late to work. And why did we choose Girona? Because Girona is the first city in all of Spain to actually try to pass a rule of punctuality, ladies and gentlemen. And that is why, because Latin people are usually late. So we are now running to try to catch some of these people and see if they are running late or not. Are most of your friends at work at the same place? Are they early or are they on time or are they late? Most of them, they are late, yeah. Where are you from? Italy. I do know a couple of Italians that are occasionally late from time to time. Oh, really? That's good to know. That's really good to know. I'm always on time. No, come on. Yeah, yeah there's got to be. There's got to be uh, I some. Know, I know Italians are never on time. Okay. Like Spanish, probably, because I'm here and I'm experiencing the same thing. I feel like home. I'm from England, on time. We're Dutch people, y'all. Always on time. Always on time. Hold on. From Belgium, not at the point of the time, but a quarter before. As English people, we're very punctual. I am notoriously punctual. I'm one of those people that's usually on time. On time. I've usually been early, but the excuse for being early is I want to get breakfast. She's always late. Okay. It comes to work, I'm always on time, but if it comes to like a friends party. meeting, Friday, I'm always late. I think he's better <laughs> than me. <laughs> wow, the Italian is better than the Asian on time. He's strange. I've never met any Italian that has been on time like him. Yeah. Where did you find him? In Asia. <laughs> and if we're late, I blame her. <laughs> he blames you. Oh yeah, he blames me for everything. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Oh, I don't mind. You know, it's just life, isn't it? <laughs> I'm frequently late. I would blame it on public transport. So the bus was cancelled, the bus crashed. Can we have some easier questions about Brexit, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anybody working for you that's usually late? Oh, definitely. And he is Spanish. So tell us what his excuses are. Usually the traffic, but he does the same route every morning. Do you feel like he might be fibbing? Oh, definitely. And I don't know why I'm actually beginning to talk like you. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a TV series. Oh my God, where are y'all from? Oh my God, the US, bring it over here, bring it over here. Do you have people working for you? I do. Are they late sometimes? No, they are always early. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Americans, number one. <laughs> I found two more Americans, y'all. I usually get there right on time. She was laid out the door on the way to this trip. Is this true? <laughs> no, I was not, I was not. We got here on time, look, we're here. We're walking, we're going to lunch, life's good. Okay, were you partying the night before? Actually, yeah, we just got married. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. And this is your honeymoon. Yes. Okay, anybody arrive late to your wedding? My family. <laughs> your family? <laughs> like two hours okay. late, one member of my family. Did the full Monty at your wedding? <laughs> no, someone did the mashed potato dance. And we the mash, we did the monster mash, the monster mash. <laughs> It was a heavenly splash. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay, well, we need to, I mean, we have to admit something, that you guys, you Americans, take dance quite seriously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we actually do dance and drink a little bit at the same time sometimes, but... Um, we never do but, this here. 
No? No, no never. No, no. You had the Cirque Dan, I have it in front of my <laughs> house. You, you first time. drink and afterwards <laughs> dance. Never okay. all at the same time. <laughs> but yes, about, uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we do like weddings. Uh, we like to uh, dance and drink at weddings. And uh, the Monster Mash actually is uh, a child's uh, dance. And I don't know why they were having this dance called the Monster Mash. I didn't do this, but you actually have to do like this, and then you go, the Monster Mash. Oh. <laughs> like this. And, uh, but, you know, who knows uh, why they were doing the Monster Mash at their wedding. There might have been a lot of kids. <laughs> Usually do the, they do the margarita or something like that. I don't know what it's called. Macarena. Uh, margarita, right. Macarena. Yeah. Macarena. <laughs> yeah, oh my uh, God. pretty close. So with uh, a few exceptions, it's true that uh, Mediterranean people are always late. Is that your conclusion? I think that is very much my conclusion, but I had that pegged even in the United States before coming here. Here, it's been a little bit uh, easier to see that usually uh, Spanish, Italians uh, are usually uh, a little bit more um, late. Uh, and that more the Catalan... More relaxed about things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Well, there was this Italian guy, right, who was actually punctual. You were shocked? That lying. shocked me. <laughs> I and think everybody was lying. Everybody <laughs> was punctual here. Come on, come yeah. on. Nobody no, no, believes I, that. I believe it from the northern people. I believe mm, it from the northern he people. He was but... a northerner. No, actually, there was something about that Italian guy that I did believe him, uh, <laughs> but he, it turned out that he was a DJ, a worldwide wide DJ, so he might actually be punctual because of that. But then I asked him, and his whole family is on time. Something is definitely going on there. I don't think they're completely Italian. Mm, okay, okay. Well, um, and from your own experience, Umberto, would you say that Catalans are... Uh, uh, what child would you, not you very say? What child? <laughs> Can we go back to the okay. monster mash? Um, no, actually, from my experience, I find the Catalans to be very, very uh, punctual for the most part. And uh, I love my favorite part is when I go into any uh, building and they go, uh, "Who's the last one?" Uh, and they actually uh, get behind somebody without trying to uh, cut their way. Because let me tell you, the Cubans, they try to cut <laughs> in through everything. My family is Cuban. Have you ever gone to a Cuban wedding? No. no. Okay, it's set at 6 o'clock. Everybody arrives at 8 p.m., two hours late. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. is, does that happen with Catalans at your mm, weddings? No. I don't not think usually. so. I don't think so. Especially no. not at weddings. <laughs> you guys are on time. If there's a free wedding, if yeah, there's no time. wedding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because we don't and what are you doing these two hours while you wait for for for, for them to arrive? Oh, From six uh, to no. eight. Actually, nobody arrives. It's at at six, oh, nobody but nobody arrives. arrives until like seven thirty or eight. Right, right, uh, right. It's not just one person that arrives on time. <laughs> yeah. And nobody arrives on time, except for the one time that one of my cousins married a uh, an American, and the American side arrived on time, and they <laughs> the, the Cuban side. Bro. They said they're not waiting, and so they went ahead with the wedding, and none of the Cuban side had arrived. <laughs> when they arrived, they were already at the uh, reception. <laughs> it didn't okay. go too well. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, okay. And now Mario is, uh, it's his turn to, uh, to talk about the origin of the shortest and most popular word in English, which is OK. But that will be in a few seconds after this brief language tip from International House Barcelona. I'm sorry is one of the most overused expressions in the English language. So much so that when we use it, it doesn't always sound heartfelt or true. British people say I'm sorry when we don't even mean it. Sorry. If you want a more informal use of, the, of to say sorry, you could try my mistake. For example, ah, I forgot to buy the tickets. My mistake. In the USA, they tend to use the phrase my bad. For example, I just broke your pencil. My bad. So you've got two informal contexts for I'm sorry. If you want an, a, a more formal idea, check out our next tip. Definition of success. What about bringing your restaurant to the world's top 10 in five years? In a minute, we'll talk with two of the minds behind the restaurant Disfruta. Remember that you can catch up with all our language tips and actually every other section and episode of the weekly mic on lasharsha.cat. And let's continue with the words and facts and with Mario Serra, who will tell us all about the origin of the most famous English word, OK, the word OK. <laughs> so is it just two letters 
yeah. or there's more to it. Oh, lots of letters. <laughs> but first of all, I have to say that it's from American origin. So I would like to ask our American representative here, yeah. Umberto, <laughs> if you uh, use any synonym of OK, if if you are talking normally, you say all right or fine or just actually, OK. Actually, uh, we just say OK for the most part. I say OK. Uh, a lot of times. We don't, I don't say all right, ever. That's very British, yeah. maybe, mm -hmm. it sounds for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We, we, okay. We say, it's kind of yeah, we say it all the time. <laughs> we, uh, there are so many explanations about its origin that this man, this Alan Metcalf, uh, okay. had uh, just written a whole book with dozens of them. Okay, the improbable story of America's greatest word. Mm, interesting. Maybe the most uh, um, known uh, are something about zero killed. Yeah. Have you ever heard yes, about yeah. it? A zero killed. Theory. Not me. <laughs> I feel really. Uh, Umberto, you're I, from the you, States. You, you yeah, haven't heard anything. I had, I had not. Are you sure you want him as a collaborator? <laughs> <laughs> I think they've been keeping things from me. No Disney, no zero killed. <laughs> it's false. And it's not true. And she knows all about it, right? <laughs> I've, I, I've actually uh, read this book and it's very, very interesting. But before reading the book, I always thought it was from Zero Kill, that it was something about that when they were coming back uh, from uh, from a combat and nobody yeah, from, was killed. Uh, they uh -huh. had a... Five killed, six killed, oh, zero killed, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's not absolutely it's false. Not, it's, it's, not, not it's not true. Okay, There's, I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one that uh, Metcalf uh, takes as in account, mm -hmm. uh, which is very nice because it comes from Chokto Indian word oh. which is okay mm -hmm. O K E H uh -huh. and uh, well uh, it meant in that language it is so it is true so oh, it, yeah. more or yeah. less it's the same and General Jackson knew th those Indians and President Wilson adopted uh, okay O K E H as a word, but it's not it the origin again. Have you ever heard about initials of anyone? What Be do you mean? Meaning uh... Oscar Krauss, for instance, or? Mm -hmm. No? That's interesting. There are lots of them. A railway freight agent called Ovidia Kelly, or a Chicago baker called Orin Kendall, Otto ah. Kimmel, a telegraph operator called Oscar Kent. All this is false. Uh, okay, false. I had heard about nice. Obadiah Ob Ob okay. uh, Kelly. I had, ah, really? He was, oh, uh, he was a railroad guy, right? Yeah, railroad. Okay, yeah. yeah, I had heard that one. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, he, okay, he, you see? Okay, yeah. that, that, <laughs> that one, one little point, one thing point. he knows. <laughs> <laughs> one thing. He, he said to have written them on documents uh, he had checked when in a railway station. Mm -hmm. So uh, his initials say ah. that they were. Okay. Okay. okay, but mm -hmm. that's not, uh, that's not according true. to metal, that's not true. Right, so and initials, no initials, no this initials. is not true. Apart from that, there are other languages, like those Indian ones. For instance, from Scottish. Oh. The Scots. Have you ever heard about that? That's it? the one that we were told was the most possible one. Where? where? At, uh, at the Scottish-Irish, yeah. uh, they use okai. Okai. Okai for um, a yes. It, that's what it translates to. Oh, and from oh, yes. Okai, it uh, started actually in the southern eastern states and it spread throughout all, all of the United States because that's where most of the Scottish Irish moved mm -hmm. to. But that's what uh, one of the three that they taught us in school. Yes. One of the three? Yeah, they taught us three. Three. Well done. Okay. Okay. Impressive. Uh, let's say we have two of them Ovidia <laughs> Kelly and Okai. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's see if on the one. Other languages. Uh, because its similarity mm, makes that there was a theory about coming from Greek, which is very, oh. very nice. Mm -hmm. Olakala is good. Ah, and okay. it doesn't come from that either. No. Yeah, so lots of theories, but um, yeah, are but there any theories that actually come <laughs> close to false. the real, like to the real well, origin of the word? Yeah, Metcalf says that all this is false because he documents in, and reproduces in the book the first time it's uh, on Boston a newspaper uh, and it's on the second page of Saturday issue on Boston Morning Post in 1839. Mm. 1839, yeah. wow. wow. And it says uh, as a joke, all correct, can, changing the A from all as an O mm -hmm. and the C from correct as a K. 
So as a joke, just it like was just okay. a joke. But the fact is that two years or the next year in the in a presidential campaign by the president Martin Van Buren, huh? uh, it was very popular his slogan because he was from all Kinderhook for from Kinderhook, which is a place in New York. It was a place then. Uh, like a village, and he was not young, so his <laughs> assessors uh, put OK as all Kinderhook, ah. and that was a political electoral campaign, so it's mm -hmm. all over the country. It was very popular, but Van Buren was not re-elected. Oh, what a shame. So it was not OK. <laughs> it was <laughs> not OK. It was KO. <laughs> it was KO. More than all right. It was KO. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, OK is used in all languages, yeah. actually. It's uh, universal. Do you guys write or say OK even in Catalan? Well, if I'm uh, using WhatsApp, I use OK all the time. Uh, if I'm writing a book, I'm guessing I don't use it. But yeah, yeah, on a or regular oral. basis. I think it's an, in an oral sense. Yeah. Lots of languages I use in Catalan. I, I use it in Catalan all the time, but I think it's because since I'm American, it just transferred. Yeah. And when I took a test, um, to see how much Catalan, uh, what level I was in. Uh, it was a verbal test and they actually told me, uh, you're very good, you should just leave okay out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Oh, but I think it's not bad, I, I use it all the time. Well, Mario, it's one of the last uh, season's big uh, sections and, and uh, it was a big uh, success, uh, actually, was Guess Word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Playing so with today... words is very nice. <laughs> So today I expect you, you brought uh, more puzzles, so one puzzle yeah. to begin with. Okay, so I think it's quite easy to be the first one today. Stress on pronunciation, six letters. Stress on pronunciation, six letters. Well, we'll let the audience be the judge of that because with Marius, we never know, right? Okay, so stress on pronunciation, six letters. Something for you to think about during the upcoming pause. And we'll be right back with Mateo Casañas and Eduard Chetruk, two of the chefs of the world's number nine restaurant, Disfrutar. Stay tuned. Last June, the venue they run has been uh, number nine on the list of the world's 50 best restaurants, a list created by the British Restaurant Magazine. Today we have with us two of the three minds responsible for the absolute success of Disfrutar. Check out these useful words that will come up in the interview first. We start the first glossary of the season with an expression which is a name for our guest, to give one's best. If you do your best or try your best to do something, you try as hard as you can to do it or do it as well as you can. Let's continue with an adjective, unbeaten. When someone is unbeaten, it means they have suffered no defeat or they have not been surpassed, so they are better or greater than anything else of its kind. Now we have a look at a phrasal verb, to poke around. If you poke around or poke about for something, you search for it usually by moving lots of objects around. And we come to the end of the glossary with another verb, to tackle, which means to deal with a difficult problem or task in a very determined or efficient way. Disfrutar is a Spanish for enjoy, and that's what you do in this restaurant with the Mediterranean essence at the world's top 10. It features surprising, unforgettable and tasty dishes such as a gazpacho sandwich with scented vinegar garnish or frozen passion fruit ladyfinger with uh, rum. Imagine that. We have here with us uh, Mateo Casañas and Eduard Chatruc. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Very pleased to have you here today and um, you guys um, uh, are in charge of uh, this Frutar uh, restaurant, a very famous restaurant now, which you uh, set up in 2014 and less than five years, in less than five years, you uh, are in the top 10 list. Mm -hmm. So the first question is obligatory, I think, what's the secret? We don't have uh, exactly a secret to explain for us <laughs> because uh, we, we try to work every day to doing our best 
and we try to do that. We, we learn it for some times, in some years in El Bulli, you know, with Ferran and Julie. And nowadays we are uh, doing our way. We try to work every day all together. Maybe it's the most important. We, we know that we are a, a good team and we try to keep this team always in the, in the same way, in the same direction. Yes. Is that, no? Is that when you receive a, a, an award no? like this and, and you say, okay, we are uh, this year number nine, but we are the same people. So today we start working and we want to be better than yesterday, no? and it's this, so for us, uh, we are not working for the hours, we are working for the people that comes every day at Comparti or at Disfruta, and we want that, that people enjoy with us. Did you expect this um, award? It's, it, is it an award? What is it? It's a, it's a, a surprise, no? Yeah, when you are working, it's, <laughs> a good it's, surprise. it's so great that the, some people are thinking about us no, to, to give us uh, this, this award, no? or something like this, like Michelin Star or other ones. But when, when you are working every day, you try to, to work for the guests that every day is coming in the restaurant. This one is the most important. Yes, the team obviously. and the guests. Okay, you are in the same team with Oriol Castro, yeah. right? Yeah. Who All couldn't together. be here uh, today. Today we are here and Oriol is in the restaurant. So uh, we try that if there, uh, every day to be in kitchen. So, of course. And now. Uh, mm -hmm. When we finish the interview, we will... Because the work work. continues, yeah. 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 right? So, um, how has this award changed your life, hmm? your restaurant, your career in general? Uh, this, this award for us uh, don't change nothing, no? Uh, but uh, I think that it's more what people uh, expect, expect hmm? about the restaurant, you know? Because people now come to the restaurant and say, okay, I'm going to the number nine, nine or 50 best or two Michelin stars or something like that. If we are number nine and Michelin star and, and all of that, is because people like what we make. Of course. So, and, mm -hmm. and if you come at this ruta, you will understand uh, in one minute what we are talking about, that we don't, work for the hours because if you come inside this ruta you will see that for the design for the entrance it's not a restaurant that that can be at michelin as a restaurant because it's a restaurant that that it's mediterranean it's fresh but it's not a luxury restaurant because mm -hmm. we want right. that people feel relaxed at home you know we want right. that people want in this way is more informal, maybe it's more dynamic, it's more, it's no? You want people to feel comfortable, Yeah, it's right? It's and you mentioned the word Mediterranean, something yeah. people use a lot nowadays, no? For yeah. almost everything. But uh, in your case, what does Mediterranean uh, touch We are, we are born in uh, Eduardo in Tarragona, Oriol in Sitges, uh, me in, in Rosas in Catalonia, no? And we are in the, in the coast and we we born in the Mediterranean. Yes. We try to find it about the products, about the recipes, about the tradition, about the way to understand the life, you know? All this one is a different things that can explain which is the Mediterranean way to understand the, the, the kitchen in, in this case. Mm -hmm. All right, a, bit, a little bit of uh, history. Um, you worked for Al Bulli. Yeah. Mm, this is where you met. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's remind viewers that Al Bulli um, was number one uh, five times, which yeah. is uh, uh, which is an unbeaten uh, record uh, no, so far. So uh, tell me about uh, Al Bulli, how it marked. Uh, your career. Yeah, uh, we are a part no, of this yeah. uh, history. Uriol starts at the bully in 96, 96 uh -huh. Mateo 97, Seven, yeah. and me in 99. And we were working until the bully was closed in 2011. And after we was with Ferran uh, three years more, working in Bullypedia and all of that. So, and it was, we feel like our restaurant and our style of cooking and, and we think in this way or in gastronomy so and for us uh, we have the el bulli ADN. so has ferran and adria come to disfrutar yeah mm? two times Twice. <laughs> Twice. he don't come a lot but yeah he come two times did he enjoy he say, it what did he say yeah yeah he enjoyed yeah? Enjoy, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, first uh, for you it was uh, Al Bulli, then we've got Compartir in uh, Cadaqués, Disfrutar uh, in uh, Barcelona. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We start on Cadaqués because it's a place that is from near from Al Bulli when we close there, okay? And we understand that we need it some time, some years maybe, you know, some new project to understand where we want to go, to understand our way, uh, our way to arrive 
from the guests, how we want to cook. Uh, which is something we would like to, 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 to know, no? I know that for you, surprise, the term surprise is uh, very important. You like to surprise uh, the people mm -hmm. who come to eat uh, at, uh, at your restaurant. So tell us, um, you said, how do you cook? How do you create a new dish? Do you brainstorm, the three of you, with Oriol together, and you cook until you go get to the perfect uh, dish? We can find What's it a different... culinary process? We, we can find a uh, different methods to, to start a new recipe, new or new okay. creative plate. You brought us an example yeah, here today. Yeah. So let's talk about this specific dish you brought here today. Okay, perfect. So here we have an example of how we can inspire in the tradition. Okay, and in this case, we are inspired in a typical Basque pincho that it's called la Gilda, no? That, la Gilda. Yeah, that mm -hmm. it's made with anchovy. Uh, green olive and a uh, green pepper that it's called uh, piparra in the Basque country. Okay? okay. And we love uh, the traditional uh, cooking and mm. we inspire in this. No? And in this case, what we have is uh, some mackerel in salt and those are the seeds of the piparra. Here we have some capers, anchovy and passion fruit. Okay? Because in our kitchen we passion want that fruit. when you eat, you have explosions of taste, okay? Because for us it's very important, no, to the surprise, but in a restaurant you go to eat and it must be pleasant. So the flavor for, no, of course, it must to be really good. Mm. Here what okay. we have is a cream of green peppers, okay? So right. we will put a little bit in the dish. It's a spicy. Mm. Okay, but, but... I love spicy. Okay, so, <laughs> so I think that you, that you can enjoy that. Okay. okay. Here yes. we have some fresh uh, passion. passion fruit juice. Yeah. Yeah, passion fruit, which we've also got uh, in the on the plate. No. Yeah, because we want the acid touch, you know. So okay. it's like lemon, more or less. Right. And, and to finish it off, we need the olive. Mm -hmm. So here some we olives. Yeah, some olive. <laughs> and here we have an olive that we make when we open this fruta. Mm -hmm. that normally people know no, today the olive that it's made in Albuja that it's spherical, that it's liquid. So okay. we want to make a different olive because mm. the olive is uh, very Mediterranean, you know, and, and we enjoy a lot with olive. So and I thought these were real olives, they are not? No, they are not. We put now here and after we will see what happens when you eat, okay? Because mm -hmm. you must beat in one bite this All right. olive. And mm -hmm. to finish it's very simple. We will use a little bit of virgin olive oil. So it's a product that we use a lot, no? When Mateo say that mm. we are very Mediterranean for us, the olive oil is, Looks we really use a lot. Good. And a little bit of cibulet, okay? On the top. And here, no? We have the flavors of, of a traditional Hilda, but you can see that that when you see it, it's different. It's a salad, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not a pinch. All right, this is a great example of the cuisine that you're making at uh, this fruta, right? Yeah, and here that people that show the TV, no? Now you will mm -hmm. eat the dish, but can imagine what happens yes. when you put this olive in your mouth, is that, no? Well, I need to do that, no? Can I try? Yeah, of yes. course. Why not? All right, of so course. let me, let here me you try, have the, because the I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's very important that, be really <laughs> that you can you must eat in one bite. All right. Mm. So, here now. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this fruit art. What Amazing. happens in your mouth is this, no? Mm. So, if you can this see. This is this fruit art. I, I the, this fruit art is that. Okay, so wow. it's crunchy and liquid inside. So Amazing. Is this Amazing. here we have the traditional flavors, but in a different way. And this is an example wow. of a kind of dish that we can make at this rather that all dishes are not inspired mm -hmm. in tradition. Yes. So we can make... Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this is a great example of, uh, of this ruta, right? Mm? It was delicious, a really delicious uh, dish. It's being a really delicious interview as well. Before continuing, let's add a pinch of humor to it. We've managed to bring on board some hilarious stand-up comedians and here's the first of them. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of have a thing for Catalan guys. Like, I like a guy that's so Catalan, you hit him with a stick around Christmas, he poops out presents. Uh, that's the kind of guy I like. I also really like skinny guys. 
which I don't really know why skinny guys like me. Like, I don't know if it's a fear-based attraction or something. Like, oh, I could die at any moment or suffocate me. Like, kind of into it. But um, I really like skinny guys. It's just whenever I'm with a skinny guy, I kind of feel like I'm petting a greyhound. Just so many balls. So much power. Okay, so let's continue discussing cuisine with chefs Mateo Casañas and Eduard Chetruc from this Futar restaurant. And now we're going to take a new perspective, that of a customer reviews, with uh, our collaborator Adina Rose Levin. Welcome. Thank you. Wow, nice to see you again. Thank you so much for having me. It's nice <laughs> okay. to see you too. So what have you brought to us today? Well, let's talk a little bit about restaurants and from the customer experience. Searching for the best restaurants to check out, either in your own town or while you're traveling, can often lead you down a rabbit hole of online search results. Thanks to sites like Yelp, Zagat, TripAdvisor, The Fork, El Tenedor, as well as Google and social media, now everyday customers can leave their own restaurant reviews for the whole world to read and weigh in on, including sometimes the restaurants themselves to leave replies to their comments. But how much can you trust what you read online from these restaurant reviews? In all of these webs, no, the good thing or the bad thing is that all people can say what they think. Totally. And maybe I can put an opinion of a restaurant that I don't go. You know, maybe. is this? Hmm. Maybe, and is this bad? Okay, but that's I an interesting think that point. It definitely well. happens. Yes. Mm. Well, I mean, focusing on what some of these reviews actually say, I was poking around one of my favorite websites. It's called Board Panda. Board Panda. Board Panda. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to look up some of these ridiculous, like the most ridiculous reviews that people have left. Really? So I'm going to share a few right now. Okay. So here's one. Uh, the customer gave it two stars, saying, the service was good, the food wasn't good, the lobster. We had a reservation at 7, and we came a little late, and our table was given away after 10 minutes, although there were plenty of tables. So then the manager replied, If you came late and your table was given away, how did you manage to eat the lobster that we don't sell? Mm. So how would you react if you found yourselves in a situation like that about your own restaurant? Crazy. <laughs> no, no I, but I can. Know. There are. No. We will try to speak a lot with the guests. Mm -hmm. At the end, we need to speak a lot. We are. We are. Uh, nowadays, we are 50 persons in the staff. Oh wow. We are 45 guests in the service. We are more working than eating. Okay. And we try to to be in top the guests, to understand, to know, to learn, to hear a lot. Okay and we try to find it in, in, in a one situation like this, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, we always say hello to the people that come to the restaurant and we say goodbye and we ask for how is the experience. Yes. And talking, maybe there are a lot of times that talking with persons, you can learn and you can say, maybe we can change this, improve it. There is an important thing that is when people call to make the reservation, for us, it starts at this point, the experience. So. You talk with the, with the person if they have allergies, if there are some products that they don't like it. So, uh, to be personal. Well, Adina, I think you've got more examples. On the other end of the spectrum, here's another ridiculous review. Ordered a waffle to find a fingernail and a hair in my food. Ooh. Absolutely shocking customer service, as I was told I would have to wait another hour to get a fresh one. I hope they're referring to the waffle, not the fingernail. <laughs> I asked for a refund, but never received one. Wouldn't send my worst enemy here. And then the owner of the restaurant chimed in on this online website or on this online restaurant forum and said, um, our restaurant is not open yet, so this is impossible, just in case anyone thinks this is remotely true. So I'm beginning to think, or I thought before, that a lot of these reviews are just written by bots. I mean, I once read that there was a crackdown on the reviews that are listed on Yelp um, to tackle these fake reviews. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what do you think about fake reviews? What, what do you think society or some sort of, or restaurants or the whole restaurant industry should do 
the big about problem around the world, no? It's not just for our our job. Not just for restaurants, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fake news. But internet have a uh, good things and not too good things, no wrong things because. Do you think there's some something specific should be done to uh, to no. prevent? No, we, we never we never write reviews? one opinion in 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 front of from a guest. We less the the. Um, in the websites, uh, like TripAdvisor, no, Panda, we speak about uh, before. We, we let the people that can write like they want. And we never say nothing. Uh, we do the job in the anything. restaurant, yeah. okay. not in the website. Yeah. And Adina, to conclude? I would like to conclude with some actual facts and that there was some news that hit recently um, about TripAdvisor. They admitted okay. that 2.1% of the reviews on their website are actually fake. They admitted it. They admitted it. Hmm. And so that was only after, though, the largest British consumer organization accused them of doing that. Yeah. So I guess that these websites are peppered with fake posts and can't do anything about it until somebody steps in for it. Mm -hmm. So, by the way, we've been talking a lot about customer reviews. Now, obviously, you guys go out to eat, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I was wondering, as chefs, if you guys have ever left any reviews, or, and what happens when, you get a, when you're served a dish that you don't like? Mm, we don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Super uh, well, well, well. Don't say nothing. Well. I pay. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Again, and go that smile. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, no, yeah. Yeah. Well. no, because you have to be respect. And, and we know there are some times that, that you are working with all your effort, mm -hmm. but there are something that maybe it's fault, um, and you have to be respect. So one option is that maybe you don't return to the restaurant. Just before uh, we go, Mateo, uh, what do you see yourselves in three, five years, and after Cumparti and Disfrutar, what follows? What's next? Well, no, we are trying some in, in about some projects, no? Uh, we, we never stay <laughs> so quiet to, to do new things. Uh, normally we are opening a, a deep food events to do the catering and banqueting. Mm, that's yeah. good. Yes. And, and we have some more ideas in our mind to do new things. But normally we, we in three, four, five years now that you ask it, we keep the, the importance that we keep the food in the floor, okay? Working every day and trying to do our best every day. And later the, the list, the wars and these ones, the people can choose if we are the, the, the people that we can recite, no? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you, Mateo. Thank you, Edward, for coming. Please yeah, good luck with everything and thank, thank you, so Adina. Much. Until thank, next time. Thank you. And time for one of the new sections of this season called One of Us. People who have come to Catalonia and have got involved in the Catalan social life by participating in a local association. And today we meet Jason Healy, a teacher and musician who lives in Mataró and who couldn't resist to join the Tabadas du Maresma. Discover why. Hi, my name is Jason. I live here in Mataró, and currently I'm a uh, tabalé with uh, Tabalés du Maresma. And I've been with the group approximately seven years, and it's been an adventure from the beginning to the end, and I hope it continues on uh, for another 107, 20, whoever, how many years, it doesn't matter. A little bit of my history as far as the music goes. I have always been that one kid with a pair of sticks, or we even without, um, always banging on the table, uh, pots and pans, pillows, and eventually my parents decided to get me a drum set at the age of 13. And I've been playing ever since. I played uh, in New Orleans, I've played in Boston, and I played bands here. But obviously as you get older, it becomes a little bit more difficult if you're not a professional. So uh, I was given the opportunity about seven years ago to come and play with the Tabalés. I was playing and a friend of mine who saw me just asked me if I wanted to play, uh, if I wanted to go through the process, the audition, the bit. I said, of course. And it turned out the audition really was um, a performance uh, in the street, uh, which took me a little bit off guard since I didn't know any of the, so the songs. And, well, just made it up on the spot with a lot of screw-ups, but we, yeah, we got through it. So, and that's the nice thing about the double A's, because even though you screw up, if your heart's in the right place, they forgive you. I remember my first Los Santas, and I remember 
uh, through all the smoke and through all the fire, uh, hearing this sound, hearing this music, and something very primitive and something just very basic, but very attractive. And uh, instantly I wanted to play. 15 years later, I meet up with a friend of mine, as I said before, and lo and behold, it was a group that I had seen uh, 20 years ago. So, what? I don't know, Destiny? But it's all worked out for me, so I'm happy with it. Um, we practice uh, once a week during the entire year, except for uh, August when we're all on holiday. It's also a social event. We all get together, we all get along, we all have a good time. The music is the main focus, obviously, uh, and we're there to make it sound as good as possible. But it is, it's, it's a social event. Uh, and, and it's been nice because this, uh, the last two years we've had a lot of new faces come in and uh, the groups come together really well. I play the pailas. My job, as far as this year, um, I'm the one that blows the whistle, kind of keeps everyone in coordination. <laughs> um, try to, anyway. So I, I would be the band director, effectively. So, yeah, I kind of have a more of a special role in that sense, but I'm not the protagonist in any which way. Uh, I think it's the people in the band that make it fun, that make it special, that give it life. And so, what's my position? Uh, just hold it together. <laughs> really, that's about it. Obviously, being in my position where I get to kind of direct and lead a bit, you have your own sensation because now, not only with the group, but I can see how the public interacts with the group and how the group interacts with the public, which just adds one more level or one more effect to the whole experience. I guess the only thing is I hope that we still give the same sensation that I had 20 years ago. Uh, and. It's kind of nice now because uh, when we play to see kids, we have one kid who plays with us. He's great. Uh, he comes out and, and I hope the same thing. I hope one day um, he grows up and says, look, this is what these guys did for me. So, uh, you know, just uh, keep spreading the music. That's what it's about. I'm sorry is an overused phrase. It's okay if you use it, but it doesn't always sound as if you mean it. In the previous tip, I gave you two informal um, alternatives for I'm sorry. Now I'm gonna give you two formal alternatives and I'm for a more formal context. The first one is my apologies. Imagine you're late for work. <sighs> Boss, my apologies, I missed the train. You could also use an, another expression, I owe you an apology, if you've made an even bigger mistake. <sighs> I owe you an apology. I completely forgot our anniversary. So, two formal ones. My apologies, I owe you an apology. I hope you use them. Well, I hope you don't have to. Hold on. I'm waiting for you. You've got me answered. Are you into reggae or new wave? Dub, pop, rock, doesn't matter. No dub you like, of course. We'll talk to their leader and we'll hear them play. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We continue with the Love in Translation, a section about international couples. And today we feature Yang Wang from China and Isaac Tragliero from Cabrils, Maresma. When we filmed them, they were expecting their second child. And guess what? Now they have a beautiful daughter, Sofia. To the parents, we say uh, congratulations. And to Sofia, we say welcome to the world. Hello everybody, my name is Yen, I'm from China. 
And uh, which province is Sichuan? Hello everybody, I'm Isaac, I'm from Cabrils, Barcelona. And uh, we are together for six years already. This is a long story. Long story. Yeah, friends we, of friends, they yeah. introduced us. But at the beginning, you know, the friend showed us each other the photos, but we didn't feel very happy about each other. But because, you know, it's, we are introduced by friends, so we decided to meet because, you know, we, we cannot let the friend lose the face. And we met in People Square in Shanghai. Yes. And I remember the first time, for me, it was love at first sight when I saw her. She was so different than the photo. I think she, she chased me for a while, especially on social media. Did I? Yes. You kept the communication going. I think when I met you, obviously it was me, but uh, in social media, I think it was you beforehand. I was trying to be nice. Yeah, you was handsome, no? Definitely. I know you're still handsome. <laughs> here, the shocking the most is that a uh, here, the tradition or the festival, people like to build a human tower. That really shocked me a lot because you can see the top there was probably there's a girl or there's a boy maybe two or three or four years old but at the bottom there are so many people you have to use like layer of layer of people and they have to work together it's not like it's okay i just do my part that's enough no you have to work together that really shocked me and for me that uh, I have adopted that here people like to say hi, uh, hola when they meet each other in the morning or anytime you know you meet even their strangers in China this is not a if this is not a the same I, I wouldn't say ni hao, ni hao, uh, the same meaning hola to a stranger but here it's very normal for people to say hola bon dia, bon dia. so I, I I think this I really really like for me the thing that I have adopted is uh, the timing. The timing for eating, the schedules that they have yes. is much better than ours. Because they eat quite early in the evening. They, they, eat, uh, they have dinner maybe at uh, 7, 8 p.m. latest. That's so you have some time to digest go. before you go to bed. Ah, uh, I'm gonna say the same thing as Isaac, what Isaac said. I'm not gonna adopt here the timing because people here are really very late. Well, after all these years, I have adopted most of the customs already. The only little, little thing that I have not adopted and probably will never do is the when we have to go to the bathroom. We like to sit down, but they don't like to have anything there. They like to to clutch down and uh, and to to do it that way. Yeah, we don't do it. Uh, you know, I cannot do it on the hall only. Family, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes, um, he has the family orientated mind. That's one thing I really, you know, appreciate that. That gave me this type of uh, sense of uh, how do I say safety. I think I'm a kind person. I think uh, yeah. in most most Although times I. Although you have a little temper. I have a bit of a temper, but uh, not too much of a temper. Just normal. Uh, This one is 100% for sure. That's his favorite food? In China, in Singapore, anywhere, always. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I asked her to marry me 12 days after I met her, so definitely I remember. I got yeah. together all her family, I bought the diamond ring and everything else. And 12 days later, I asked her to marry me. So probably I said I love you a few minutes after I met her for the first time. When you know, you know. You have to close the deal quickly. And I answer him, yeah, if you treat me well, I will marry to you. But in English. 
English, yes. So, <laughs> so nobody knew what was so happening. So my family didn't understand what. In Afrikaans language, coerce means rhythm, groove or message. And in Catalonia, it means one of the most successful reggae root bands. They've been touring across the country all summer and now they are here at the Weekly Mag. Kelly Isaya of Gegor, singer and leader of the band. Welcome to the Weekly Mag. Thank you very much for inviting us. Busy summer? Lots yeah, of yeah. concerts? Yeah, yeah. Um, I always say it's an opportunity for us and a privilege uh, to be one of the band in Catalonia representing this genre, reggae music. And the summer has been busy for us and it has been a blessed summer. Well, uh, they say that uh, live concerts is your strong point. What's your secret? Yeah, the secret is number one, age. We're very young. And uh, very young, yeah, we, we, we're yeah, you young. look very yeah. young, and <laughs> thank you, <laughs> you too. <laughs> and so, uh, we add a uh, uh, passion to what we do, and you can see that we are we are hungry. Uh, we want we, we, we want the people to to have a blast time with us, we want them to jump, we want them to dance, and we know that to make them dance, we have to dance first. And so, this is our secret, this is what we do. Well, you play lots of styles such as new wave, uh, dub, pop, rock, but your roots are in reggae. So what makes um, uh, Coyers so uh, in love with uh, reggae? Why reggae? Reggae because uh, I think my brother, the drummer of the band, okay. uh, I think he's uh, in love with reggae even more than every one of us. And so when we started the band, we didn't know we wanted to do reggae. I called the people uh, to, to start something. Come on guys, let's start something because I want a band of mine and let's do the things we love to do best. And even from the first song we, we played, uh, Walking on the Moon, The Police, okay. uh, we did a version of that song, it's even on YouTube. And so uh, the first song we did, my brother took it in a reggae way and I even sang it in a reggae way and he said, come on. So I was speaking that's for it. itself, let's, that's it. let's, let's, let's go for reggae. Mm -hmm. so Actually, you told me before that when you came here, you were 14, you didn't know you would become a singer. Yeah, I never knew. I never and planned And a successful it. singer. I never planned it. Uh, as I told you before, behind the cameras, my father wanted us to, to, to study. Uh, it's like the most important thing for him is that three of us, me, my brother and my sister, we have to study. And so we, we took it serious, uh, study. But you know, uh, you can never hide your passion. You can never hide your hobbies. And so music was part of it. And it's, 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 it's a way of living, it's a, it's a, it's a lifestyle. And so uh, it spoke for itself. Mm -hmm. You come from uh, Nigeria. Yeah. And uh, in the band, uh, you sing, actually use different languages, Catalan, Spanish, um, English, and Pidgin. even Pidgin. Yeah. Exactly. So what does that variety bring to your music? Yeah, uh, it's the part of our music that many people doesn't know okay and but when I sing in Pidgin I'm like being connected to Nigeria I'm connected to my roots I'm connected to my origin and I close my eyes on stage when I sing in Pidgin and I'm like imagining uh, my roots imagining my upbringing imagining the house where I was born and where I was brought up from as well and so I imagine my childhood friends and the poverty in the area and the injustice, uh, the Western world and everything. And so it's necessary for me to uh, sing in my uh, mother's tongue. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think? What is your opinion about uh, reggaeton? The, the, I'm talking about the lyrics that sometimes can be quite... Uh, sexist. What is your opinion on that and do you think that musicians should have a uh, responsibility towards the young uh, generations? Yeah, I think uh, sometimes it's something we're not thinking about and uh, I think two days ago I posted something about this on my Instagram. I'm very, very, very critic about this Yes. and now I'm even uh, facing uh, uh, musicians who are not uh, reggaeton musicians because now uh, the lyrics are changing 
and so it's even worse than reggaeton musicians. Uh, lyrics about uh, come on, I'm gonna hold you, I'm gonna put you down, and yeah. I'm gonna tie you to the bed and stuff like this. I think it's not it's not uh, encouraging for the young people. We need the young people to to listen to things that are happening in our society. We need because music. Uh, is the first thing that's connected to to people. Right. What I all young, or very young, the first thing connected to you, to your everyday activity and everyday life is music. And so, if the lyrics is talking about rubbish, how do you expect our future to be? And so, I think uh, you have a point there, and it's important that the reggaeton musicians uh, should try and think about these things and change. A little bit. That's a good point. You don't, they don't have to change the style. The style is perfect because we we all need. We just talk about the lyrics. Yeah, the lyrics. Mm -hmm. The style is perfect. We just need sometimes we need uh, to disconnect from our our work and go out and have uh, yeah. a couple of beer and and dance to reggaeton. It's, it's it's cool, but the lyrics should be tricky. Okay, uh, reggae is often associated or mostly associated with um, good mood, but can also it can also uh, show other feelings. Yeah. So you brought uh, an instrument here today. Yeah. Um, um, maybe you can uh, show it uh, to us, right? Which is the didgeridoo. But can you tell us? Uh, can you give us an example about uh, these different styles of, uh, yeah, uh, it, of different feelings in yeah, music? Yeah, you're right when you say uh, reggae music is more connected to good mood. And sometimes when people ask, uh, what style of music do you do? And I say reggae. And some I say, oh, good, but Mali, and you know, marijuana, and this and that, a good mood. And, and uh, sometimes people forget that uh, reggae music can also project a sad moment. Okay. And so I'm, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, for example, I wrote this song uh, titled Fire uh, that talks about uh, calamity, uh, poverty, injustice, and as I've said before, about things happening in, in the third world. And I'm just going to close my eyes and sing, okay? Because okay. that's the only way I can, I can really concentrate while I'm singing it. And who be the nest of fire, oh, oh, nest of fire. Don't want to kill in my country. Who be the nest of fire. The seaport don't want to kill in, kill in my country. Oh, 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 see them face. Now I'm going to like killing, killing. Oh, yama, yama, oh. oh. While I'm singing, I'm imagining the guitar, I'm imagining the, the, the keys, I'm imagining the drums and everything. It goes slow. And so, it, you know, it makes you think. And maybe an example of a, a, a good mood song. Uh, it's more common. Yeah, this, we're going to sing one later. And, yes. And you can sing any other one to say, I'm a la 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 yon, la 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 yon. So this is the type of song that we sing to our audience to encourage them because we have a very young audience and we want to encourage them that they can do whatever they want and they can be whatever they want, they can be. It, there's a, a word of, in, in, in this same song, Lion, Namunaye, means new name. Mm -hmm. uh, you can give yourself the name you want, meaning you can be whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can reach whatever you want exactly. to get to. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to believe and walk. And be confident, right? That's it, confident. Mm -hmm. And tell me, uh, just before we go, uh, what does a reggae band do with an Australian or a traditional Australian instrument, which is the didgeridoo? Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, we don't have the didgeridoo in our uh, repertoire, but before uh, we had it and it was nice. We have uh, uh, one of our uh, music director in our band. Uh, it happens to be our, our keyboardist as well. His name is Bisen, but we call him Biso. So he's the owner of this instrument, and he, he likes to play different type of instrument. I think he can even play, let's say, not less than eight or ten instruments. And so wow. uh, we decided to put this in our track list mm -hmm. and our set list. And it was nice. Mm -hmm. you, you want you want me to show you? Are you going yeah. to use it later? No, I'm gonna use it now if you want. Later I'm gonna use it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not the expert. Biso is the expert. 
but I'm gonna Miso try is, uh, uh, the keyboardist okay. in my, my group. So I'm gonna try. Let's see. <laughs> It's not supposed to sound like this. It's supposed to sound better than this. Biso uses other lips um, vibrating when you blow. You don't blow it like trumpet. Wow. You vibrate your lips. Sounds difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> we, in our show, in the middle of our show, we play this instrument and we dance with our audience. And this gave us uh, good vibes, it gave us power. It gave us energy and freedom as well. Mm, sounds so, great. And today, yeah. what are you going to sing for us? Today, we're going to sing, uh, play Red Lights. It's a love song, a uh, song I wrote for my, for my girlfriend, mm -hmm. and a song uh, that talks about our, our adolescent age, uh, when we met each other, and what we live together, and what we did together, and how we feel. So it's a song for us. Romantic. Yeah, it's a romantic song. Okay. Kelly, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Looking thank forward to uh, listening to you. Thank you very much. Okay, and while choirs are getting ready on stage, let's listen to a really useful language tip. Auxiliary verbs are like the Swiss army knife of English language. Take questions, short answers, you name it. Did you know they can also be used for emphasis? Check this lesson with teachers Helen Armstrong and Tim Wari from International House, Barcelona. There are many occasions where we really want to emphasize or communicate more strongly what we want to say. So Tim, can you come here a minute? Yeah, sure. Hello. So, what are we doing? Right, now as you're not coming to my party this Friday... But I am coming to your party. Sorry? I am coming to your party. Okay, so pronunciation makes all the difference. Tim emphasised the am coming instead of saying I'm coming to your party. Because I am coming to the party. Okay, thanks. You don't have to if you don't want to. But I do want to come. Okay, so here Tim emphasised do. So if the sentence doesn't already have an auxiliary verb, we add do. And this stresses the fact that he really likes my parties. Mm, it's true, I do like them. Okay. So let's practice a little bit more. Why don't we try contradicting everything I say? Okay, let's go. Okay, so we didn't invite you to the party because we know you don't like pizza. But I do like pizza. And if you came, I don't think there's enough room in my house. But there is enough room. But you never called to say you were coming. But I did call. Okay, so also, as well as contradicting what someone says, we also use the emphatic do to talk about something we feel strongly about. For example, Tim, you do need a haircut. Are you serious? Yeah. And also we use it in conditionals. So if Tim does come to the party, he should learn some new jokes. My jokes are great. What are you talking about? Okay, yeah. Thanks, thanks Tim. Now we also use this, the emphatic do, with imperatives. For example, do stop doing that it comes across more strongly. And Tim, do come to the party. Okay, I will then, great. But if I do come, you have to buy me a drink. Absolutely, thanks. Okay. Everything in everything you are 
Guess what's coming next? Exactly, guess what? Your favorite quiz with your funniest quiz master in every sense of the word. Stay tuned. Did you know that you can borrow books in English at your local library? Be it a classic or a modern author, you can enjoy English literature just around the corner. Don't miss this opportunity and listen to the first of many recommendations by the Xarxa de Bibliotecas Municipales of the Diputación de Barcelona. Without doubt, Animal Farm is a very good book to start this section of the program with. And this is the case because Animal Farm has many characteristics that I would like to share with you. For example, uh, this is the very text that gave George Orwell his reputation worldwide. This means that if you read Animal Farm, you will be sharing mental space with one of the minds that helped create the world as it is today. The world was so important that it was prohibited in more than 100 countries at a time. Today, the book is still banned in places such as North Korea, Vietnam or the United Arab Emirates. 
apart from a political reading, the book can also be read sociologically, psychologically, and from many other perspectives. You know what? Children love it too. The book can be read as a story for children. Try it. The book is so different that it attracts and equal readers to the same ground, and they all love it. Read Animal Farm and tell me all about it afterwards. In the curious incident of the dog in the night time, the main character is Christopher Boone, who founds a dog dead in the street, um, and he's determined to solve the mystery of who killed the dog. Um, we see all the novel through his eyes, and he's a very special character because he has Asperger syndrome. Um, the, the novel is very, very touching, very funny, and very easy to understand. And it was turned into a stage play uh, that was performed with great success in many countries. And now, as we get to the last part of the show, it's time for fun and games with, guess what? Our quiz, which this season comes loaded with brand new things. To know more about it, let's welcome back our favorite quiz master, the only presenter who spent last season planning his summer holidays and spends his summer holidays planning the quiz. Sergi Cervera, of course. Welcome back. Hi, Marcella. Over to you. Thank you, thank you. Here we are again. Summer's over, but fun is not. And I have come straight from California with lots of new ideas. Wow, California, that's impressive. Yes, yes, but more, more of that in a bit. Because now I want to introduce you to the three contestants of Guess What? Because yes, this is the first change for this season. We'll have not two, but three contestants. Let's say hi to last season's winner, She's smart, she's fast, she's witty, and she's always picking on me. Patricia Scalona. With good reason, I would say. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, welcome back, <laughs> your friend. Thank you. <laughs> and as you can see, she holds this smile that says, look at me, and I'm smarter than you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she will have to take on two contenders, our longtime collaborator Mark Broderick and today's special guest, the American singer Chloe Phillips. Welcome you two. Welcome Thank to the you. show. How's it going? So, do you think you are capable to beat our champion? Absolutely, without a doubt. I love She's that She's going attitude. down in every single episode. She's going to lose this year. She's going to know what Marius felt like last you year. You see, Patricia, Crying I have an ally. at night time. I have an ally. Well, yes. we'll see about that. So, what are you going to test our guest today, Sergi? Well, you know, this show is holiday to me, Marcella, but we will dedicate this first quiz to jobs. Jobs. So, as I mentioned before, we will make use of our American connection. And let's watch this video from our special correspondent in Los Angeles. Good evening, Sergi. Hey, how are you? So, here I am, working like a dog for the first guess what of the season. We have interviewed some people about what they do for a living, and here are the questions, so pay attention to them. What time do you wake up normally? Uh, varies, sometimes like 8, sometimes 11 in the morning. Breakfast, it's a maybe. Uh, I take care of people's little problems. <laughs> How many hours would you work in a regular day? Regular day, 6, six to 8. Oh, this guy is good. This guy is really good. I he mean, the reporter. looks like someone I know. Right? Mm -hmm. Someone yeah. very talented, mm -hmm. I might say. Yeah, yeah. He must be like a Hollywood star or something. Uh, no? Probably, probably. I <laughs> want to be like him when I'm. What do you think, Chloe? Yeah, he seemed like he um, had some really interesting questions to ask. Okay. Yeah. I like it. I like it, Patricia. You she, see now. I think she's ready. Welcome to the team. Thank by you. By the way. Thank you. She yeah. can be your friend. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, now you have, have two. No, no, yeah, now you have <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, so All right. multiple choice. What's the job of this young guy who lives off taking care of people's little problems? I'm gonna give you three options and you three have to pick your answer, okay? Option A, he's an urologist. 
Option B, he's a plumber. And option C, he's a service assistant. What do you think, guys? He's had little problems, right? He wakes up at like 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay. He's, yeah, that wouldn't be a urologist. That guy would be up here. I go for C, service so, assistant. Service assistant, yeah. Chloe? I'm gonna go for plumber, actually. Plumber, option yeah. B. And Patricia? Me too. Plumber, yeah. all right. Okay, so let, uh, let him tell us the solution. And I work as a server assistant at a nice Americana restaurant. All right, yes. he's a good service start. assistant good start. at an American restaurant. Let's maybe ask them how they feel about American cuisine, if there is such a thing. <laughs> oh, whoa! <laughs> boom, boom. Let's start with the, with the native, no? The, the yeah. Native American, Chloe? <laughs> native American. <laughs> I don't oh, sorry, no, well, you know what I mean. From yeah. America, yeah, not the Native American. <laughs> Definitely not a Native American. How do I feel about American cuisine? Um, I think American cuisine has a lot of variety. There's a lot of different types of American cuisine. I'm from the South, so we like a lot of fried food, a lot of potatoes, a lot of cheese. That kind of thing. I love it. I gained crayfish? Some, some pounds. Crayfish, yeah. Crayfish, crayfish. and uh, what's the other one? Catfish. Fried catfish. <laughs> catfish. No, stuff like this. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Good Fried chicken. Yeah. Yeah. KFC. All that stuff. Okay, so yeah. uh, let's go to the second uh, witness, maybe? Yeah. Let's watch the video. What time do you regularly or normally wake up in the morning? Um, 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Okay. I work at 4.45. Physical. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's a bit repetitive. It's like human Tetris. All right, a physical job which makes you wake up at 3 a.m. and you describe <laughs> as a human Tetris. What does she work as? What do you think? We're gonna see the options. A, she works as a traffic police agent in Hollywood. B, she moves bags around at the airport for Dela Airlines. And C, she classifies bodies at the morgue in Los Angeles. <laughs> what do you That's guys That's really think? dark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there are a lot Sorry, could you, you come up B? with could you B again? <laughs> What was B again? Sorry, I missed B. The is, B? B is she moves bags around at the airport for Delta Airlines. You have to pay okay. more attention, Mark. Sorry. No, 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 no. I, I, didn't hear which, I didn't hear which airline company. I'm I was trying to, get, I'm trying to get a clue out of the airline company. I'm you see, Patricia, with... I'm trying to be a fair quiz master. I'm going to go with start. B. A tough one. I'm going to go with B. You're yeah. going with yeah, B. Yeah, yeah, human Chloe? Tetris or whatever. I'm going to go with B. I'm going to go with B. B. Yeah. Okay. That's the Delta Airline yeah. thing, right? That's right. That's right. I'm going to say A, just, you know, for the sake of it, but to change. To <laughs> change. So which one? A. 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 So she works as a traffic police agent in Hollywood. All right, right so let's hear how she earns her living. I, uh, I touch a lot of bags, let's put it like that. <laughs> I work the baggage at Delta Airlines. Oh, yes. All right. Yes. Two, so three, point to you guys. I'm happy, you know. I have to say, she's new here and she's getting her points. You are. I mean, you I'm are new well to this section, you but you know. Exactly. I'm... And Patricia got nothing. Exactly. <laughs> Get used to it, Patricia. For the moment. Okay, so we've got two points for Mark. Exactly. Right? Two points one for Mark, for one point to Chloe. And one for I, I want to ask you, when did I become the evil witch of the North for you? Uh, last season. Okay. It was just when I started as a quiz master. Thank <laughs> it's like you for that point thank in time, for, right? Exactly. <laughs> thank you for asking me the question and letting me give you the answer. <laughs> Let's finish this fantastic uh, set of videos. Yeah, for absolutely. Mark. And Let's Hollywood. listen to the last person interviewed by Serge's American version. I like to take my time in the morning. Yeah, usually I wake up a lot of time before I go, yeah, I leave the house. Um, it's a lot of um, service, mm -hmm. kind of. And like to the public? Yeah, mm -hmm. with people. It depends. Sometimes three hours, sometimes seven hours. Okay. A lot of history, too. A lot of? History. Okay, okay. Yeah. History. I talk people. A lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the story of a girl who works with people from three to seven hours a day. What does she work as? Let's see the options. Option A, she is an actress and plays Pocahontas at historical reenactments. <laughs> <laughs> B, she is a tourist guide for French people. And see, she is a history teacher, uh, a high school history teacher. Uh huh. 
Wait, you want to start so. this time? <laughs> my guess is B. What was B? B. <laughs> my guess is B. Guide. What was that? <laughs> I knew it wasn't A or C. No, yeah. Tourist yeah. guide. Tourist guide for tourist French guide. people. Tourist guide, yeah. Me too. I think tour guide because her schedule is variable and mm -hmm. the other two jobs would be, well, I guess being an actor, you would have kind of a variable schedule, but as a high school teacher, you have a regular schedule. And, and also as an actress, you wouldn't be working for three to seven hours and a day. And you wouldn't be Pocahontas <laughs> as a white person, I think. <laughs> well, you never know. Oh, you never know. You never have seen that before. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna Unfortunately. go with the history teacher. I mean, they don't teach much, his much history in the States, so it makes sense that it's three to seven hours a week, wow. maybe. <laughs> Chloe, go for him. You go for him. Go straight extra time okay. to go for him. And Patricia, our champion. Um, you wanna go, go ahead for the tourist guy? Absolutely, no right? problem. B, B. So Patricia is supporting B, Chloe is supporting B, and Mark is supporting C. Lack of education in the United States. <laughs> exactly. Let's wow. discover Sorry. the truth. <laughs> I'm working for a tour guide company <laughs> for French people. Okay, oh. all right. Oh. I have to admit Hi. that I enjoyed that moment as Why well, now? Mark. Yeah, you lost badly, and I. an American. I yeah, I know. An educated <laughs> American. By the way, right. um, by the way, that's I have what to say for it. exactly. We've got a draw here, Chloe and Mark two points, Patricia one point, but the show and the game is not over. We've got. Uh, uh, lots of things to play with, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Let's say goodbye to our correspondent in Los Angeles and let's continue the game. Yeah, we'll miss him very much. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Sergi. So those are the professionals you might bump into if you come and visit the West Coast. Sergi Cervera for La Charcha from Los Angeles, California. Wow, how cool was that? This guy is great. Yeah, he's yeah, this so guy kisses so really well him. as well. Yeah, he's so yeah, romantic. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so romantic, right? Yeah, yeah. We all agree on how talented this okay, guy is. Okay, uh, so um, we uh, said before the score uh, is uh, two points for Mark and Chloe, one point for Patricia, and we are ready for the second round. All right, second round, two points per answer, two points her answer. Time for a speed challenge and bell ringing. Now is the right time for you to play. <laughs> exactly, that's the attitude. Exactly. So two bells are well, difficult. They can try it, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. They They're gonna try, try now because want. two bells are difficult enough. <laughs> so as there is three of you, you will have each a different sound. Our guest contestant Chloe will keep our good old bell. Try it now. There well you done. go. Patricia gets a horn. You want to try it? <laughs> Impersonated hub for Max. <laughs> there you go. Well done. Wonderful. And Mark, uh, exactly. Mark, you are left with the hammer. So if you want to test Did it. Did you pick this up on holidays? Huh? Test it. Ridiculous as we expected. Uh, exactly. Right. <laughs> so we are after the jobs of fictional characters. I say the name of famous characters and you ring your bell, hung your horn or hit your whatever you are having mark, hammer let's say, to answer. If you don't get it right, the other two can have their chance game. Uh, it's all about fictional characters this Right, time. absolutely. We're gonna try it? Let's you ready guys? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's see the excitement right now because now it's about being fast. Okay. <laughs> There's a bit of a disadvantage here. Ah, Hold on a come second. On. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on. Excuses. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Right. We're gonna have to hit really fast ready. and really hard. Okay. And ready like ready. Let's go. Oh Three. my god, yeah, no, it came no, back. It's back I knew again. it. I knew it. Three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one, here we go. An evil lector. Mark. Psychiatrist. That's correct. Uh, Jessica Fletcher. <laughs> Mark. Uh, she was a detective. No, 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 shut your mouth, shut your mouth, Patricia. Teacher? Uh, no, that's not correct. No. Okay. You want to try? Yeah, yeah. Okay, no one. That point goes to no one. Oh. Next one, uh, Minerva McGall. Chloe? She's a professor at Hogwarts. Absolutely, Great. point to Chloe. Well Get points ready. To Chloe. Huh? Two points to Chloe. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, you're paying attention. I like it. Oh, Chloe, I like did it. you want this job, actually? <laughs> but you see, <laughs> but you see how diplomatic, the diplomatic way she used to correct the quiz master? I like it. Mary Poppins. <laughs> Nanny. N that, that actually, she was right. She hogged the, hung oh, the horn first. On. You Patricia? pointed at me. You pointed at me. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You have to say the name, right? Uh, yeah, she, okay. she has okay. to go for it, okay. Patricia. Nanny. Correct. Point to <laughs> Patricia. John Watson. <laughs> he was the assistant to. He was a detective. No, he's a police. Yeah, that's correct, oh. Patricia. Doctor. There you go, doctor. <laughs> correct. Oh, doctor. Ready, guys? Jerry Maguire. <laughs> he was a sports agent. That's correct. Get ready. Vivian Ward. 
Mark? <laughs> I just hang the hammer for me. No, uh, wait, 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 wait. So I know, I know, I know. Maybe more. She's negative point. She's a singer. No, that's incorrect. Oh. Patricia, no I'm going to give you a Don't quick go. clue. Pretty woman. Oh, God. Patricia? Prostitute. That's correct. <laughs> Prostitute. Uh, Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> Mark? Okay, he was a theoretical physicist. Correct! Well done. Next one, SpongeBob. Mark? He was, uh, he's, re he's really competitive. Sure. SpongeBob huh? SquarePants. He uh, ran a restaurant. So? so okay. He was a waiter. So? Waiter? No, incorrect. Oh. He flips hamburgers. Which, which makes him which a... Which makes him a hamburger flipper. A chef! A chef, correct. <laughs> cool. That's right, that's right. Point to Chloe. Peter Parker. <laughs> Mark? Okay, he was a reporter. He, he, he did it first. Close, you're no, close. No, he didn't. Close. close. Okay, you're tense. He, he was, he was uh, a reporter. I know he's a photographer. Photographer. Point to Patricia. <laughs> you, are too, you are too fast. All right, last but not least, Ali McBeal. <laughs> Patricia? Uh, lawyer. Lawyer, correct. No, there is a last one, Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> you so uh, unfair, Chloe. Wizard. That's Wizard. correct. Point That's to Chloe. Correct. Two points. Wow, two points. Wow, <laughs> that was intense, even for that me. That was intense and um, exciting as well. Who's so keeping track of the score? I want to know what's going on. 11 points for Patricia. Obviously. <laughs> so she's back. She's, she's back. back. She's, she's back. back. Um, wow. Patricia is uh, in the lead with 11 points. Congratulations. But, but uh, the game is not over yet. And we've got Chloe and Mark, eight points each. So we've got a draw yeah. for the moment. Don't get too excited, Mark. Don't get too excited. <laughs> Let me ask you a personal question. What did you want to be as kids? What did you say when I, wanna, when I grow up, I want to be a... Um, what job was it? A pilot. A pilot. What kind of like, aircraft? Uh, no, I wanted, to, I wanted to be a military <laughs> wow. pilot. I saw, I saw Top Gun at some yeah, point in my life. That's it. Next time you wanted to be Tom Cruise. That. I wanted yeah. to be you Tom Cruise. You need to lose about another six inches. <laughs> Chloe? When I was a kid, I had two dreams. I wanted to be, for a long time, I wanted to be a gymnast. Okay. And I always wanted to be a singer. A Catalan singer. Mm. A Catalan singer. Yeah, being Catalan, that was my third dream. The third dream. Yeah. <laughs> so almost, all, almost there. I mean, all your dreams yeah, came like true. Yeah, two thirds of them came true. The gymnast thing. Who knows? It's maybe, not that exciting Maybe you'll anymore. see me at the Olympics <laughs> next summer. You never know. You never know. And Mark, okay. being Mark Broderick. I want to, Yeah, exactly. Being Mark Broderick. It was the oh. almost awesome job okay, ever. Okay. I want to be on TV. Basically. Okay. Oh. So yeah. Patricia, like as Marcella mentioned, <laughs> Patricia <laughs> is in the lead, but things can't change. In the next challenge and you'd better prepare because this time round every question is worth three points one two three okay and while you prepare mentally we'll have a bit of stand-up comedy for you we'll be back in a few seconds don't go away <laughs> Okay, and what do ninjas like to drink? Don't know. What? <laughs> Welcome back. Here we are again. Third round. Same rules as before. Now it's Marcella's turn to ask you specific questions about jobs and celebrities. Remember, three points every right answer. Okay, so the first one goes like this. When uh, Albert Einstein was 17, he worked in his uncle's electric company. So what did his job involve? And I give you a clue. He was a brilliant mind. Mark? Uh, light bulbs. Light the job? He, uh, the job. Uh, he was an electrician, I don't know, with light bulbs, Electric. fixing light bulbs. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Exactly. Three points to Mark. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Albert Einstein. Yeah, mm -hmm. he worked as an auxiliary electrician, screwing bulbs at Munich famous Oktoberfest in 1908. That's right. And number two is about Harrison Ford. Oh, yes. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> what... <laughs> What was Harrison Ford's job before he was hired for major roles in Hollywood? Ah. Chloe? He was a carpenter. Absolutely. Well three points to Chloe. Excellent. So you can okay, ring before the question's three. finished. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. All okay. right, we have an even. It's interesting because we've got a draw. They the three are, of them. The three of them. Wow. 11 points Patricia, 11 points Chloe, and 11 points Mark. Your ability Ooh, to count is astounding, Sergi. You, <laughs> <laughs> okay. you guys are doing an excellent job. Exactly, right we at the end. We continue with number three. Okay. Oshias. Oshias work at Japanese train stations during rush hours. The question is, what do they do? I know. They, push, pe they push people inside the metro. Great. Correct. Well done. Three correct. points Three to mark. Points. That's correct. Exactly. Okay. And we continue with number four. Mm -hmm. Apart from being an actor and a director, Clint Eastwood served for two years as what? Mark. He served two years in the army. No, that's incorrect. Oh. He was a... He was a... Some of you have oh, any idea? Wait, 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 wait. Can we get a hint? No, you, you cannot... You, you, you cannot done. answer anymore. Okay, you are can done. I answer again? I think I have. Keep your like, mouth... Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Chloe and job. Patricia. What An important he do? job. He worked for two years. Can you give us a hint? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Come on. You can. He served. He was in... Mm -hmm. He was it's, an it's important person in his uh, town. <laughs> Patricia! He was a mayor. Absolutely. A mayor. Would, you, right. would you be able to say what town was he mayor in? Mal Paso? No, that's the production, that's company. The production company, right? Carmel Actually, by the Sea. Exactly. California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a mayor Not in Barcelona. Right? Not Barcelona. Not the <laughs> Carmel in the Barcelona, obviously. <laughs> Okay, we Please continue with, with the uh, number five. Rides in on a horse, you know, like a <laughs> <laughs> right, right, Okay, uh, talking of jobs and <clears throat> uniforms, I'm sure many of you uh, know the Village People Band, right? So, where does the name Village People come from? Patricia? Comes from New York, from the East Village. That's correct. Exactly. Greenwich Village, right. correct. Known exactly. For? Known for? Known mm for, -hmm. known for its large gay population population at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and we finish with uh, one last question, which is a uh, very important. A very, because, very special. Yeah. Whoever gets it right and pay attention here will have five points, but five points, but. Think twice before ringing your bell because if you get it wrong, yeah, we will take five points uh, from you. Mm -hmm. So you can get five points or you can lose five points, right? So the idea is that you need to be sure you've got, you've got the correct answer. Mm -hmm. So right? here we go. And um, we won't leave the village people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look at them carefully and try to retain as many details as possible. You've got a few seconds. Time's right. up! Time's up. Oh, All right, so uh, now it's time to answer the question. Remember to think twice before ringing your bell. If you get it wrong, it will take five points away from you. And the question is, <laughs> name four, right? Four of the six uniforms of the band. Patricia, think carefully. Hold on, think carefully. Because you say it right or you lose five points. A cowboy. Four of the six uniforms of the band. A cowboy. A cowboy, um, a Native American, uh, a guy who's in the military, an army man, a policeman. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it, four. And that's, that you said, you said four. four. Uh -huh. right. They are correct. Right. Meaning, meaning wow. we have a winner right. today. I dispute the fact that <laughs> yeah. she okay. comes before me. Okay, and she's the other two. Exactly. She's back. Uh -huh. She's back. No. She's back. <laughs> yeah, she's back. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, Patricia. Obviously, Patricia is in a good shape. She's back and better well. than ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome well, back, um, Patricia. You. But you guys, you guys perform it very well. You make it difficult for her for two seconds. <laughs> Wow. Okay, so congratulations, uh, Patricia, and uh, thank you so much, uh, yes. Mark, for She's coming, and Chloe, our uh, new guest, to welcome. And I don't know, do you think we should invite her to sing next time, maybe? I would love. I've been trying to hear her, I mean, to, to be in a concert performed by her for a while, in, uh, in live concert. Yeah, mm. would you like that? I would love that. Be at the front that. in the mosh yeah. pit, no? All right, so, um, <laughs> yeah, we have a deal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What are you, you preparing? What Are you preparing brass. anything? Oh, here? what am I preparing? Should I write you guys a song? Oh, no. yes! She said that on camera, now she has yeah? to do it. Oh, no, now I have to do it. Yeah. What would it be called? Well, Sergi and Marcella? 
<laughs> yeah. You yeah. Or you can say, Sergi, the fake Matt Dillon. <laughs> you can oh. sing like a parody. Now, okay, so you're saying now this because you lost. And exactly. that's why. Because pick on that's a bad attitude if you are coming back and playing in this quiz. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, it has Ooh. been fun. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> and with yeah. this great news, we finish today's show. Catch up uh, with all the episodes and sections of the Weekly Mag Online and follow us on the social networks. And don't forget the guest word puzzle by Madri Serra, which is stress on pronunciation, six letters. You can post your answer on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. We'll have some more fun in English next Saturday. In the meantime, have a great week. Bye-bye.